Hi, everybody. This is Joy Lajere. Welcome to Matured Musician. So I'm your host for today. And I have our guest today, Jean Lenke. And she's going to be with us shortly. I do have to break for a short uh, shout out to Luscious Moss Studio. Uh, it is owned and operated by Chad Quist out of Edgewood, Washington. And he has built a, a studio for guitarists and drummers um, and an environment that um, inspires creativity and collaboration. So if you, you can find him on Facebook by simply going to Luscious Moss Studio or Chad Quist. Anyway, we are here and going to start this interview with uh, Jean, and I am so glad you're here with us today, Jean. Thank you so much. <laughs> you're welcome. And as usual, I start asking, how in the world did you ever get into music? And I know a little bit about your story, so you're on. You know, I um, was your average kid who sang in the choir in school and junior high school, high school, in the alto section, never got any glory, no solos, didn't think I had any talent. But I like, <laughs> well, I mean, I like to sing. And, um, you know, went off to college, uh, sang a little bit in one college ensemble in the chor a chorus type situation. And then had some babies, sang to them in a rocking chair. Um, Eventually, they started to grow up. We started to go to church. We wanted to raise them in some sort of um, values environment. And it was there that we made our closest friends in Philadelphia, uh, the parents of our children's friends, the parents of the children at church. And eventually, I got involved in a middle school talent show project with another parent. And for six years, we orchestrated and facilitated a middle school talent show. And a lot of our kids were in it. A lot of our friends' children were in it. And it was the last year of the talent show. We were moving on. All, our youngest were moving to the high school. And someone in the hall said, well, now what are we going to do? <laughs> and and uh, somebody else said, well, we just support them at the high school. And we're like, no, 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 You can't follow your kids to the high school. You can't be a hover-around parent. <laughs> Even though in the end, we kind of were hover around parents. But um, so one of them said, well, if sixth graders can play Led Zeppelin, so can we. And we oh. laughed. And said, no, I'm serious. He said, Tom, you played the drums. Gene, I know you can carry a tune. I play the keyboard. Come to my studio. Your husband's flying. Come on over to my studio at the office on Thursday night, and let's just have a beer and have some fun. Wow. And so they twisted my arm and I mean, there must have been a part of me that wanted to go. Right. right. But I went and they said, can you read music? And I said, uh, Brahms. And they <laughs> said, no, how about Carol King? And they handed me a microphone and a lead sheet for Carol King's it's too late. And after that I was hooked. Uh -huh. There's something about hearing yourself on a microphone and going, Oh, I'm in tune. <laughs> and, so it took um, actually many years. We, we sort of became the church band and played a couple barbecues and the church picnic. And that's about it. Um, a food bank benefit we started. And then the drummer moved away. He moved back. He moved away. We kept changing drummers. We kept changing people. And eventually the whole thing sort of devolved. Hmm. And we spent one winter. Uh, and at that point, um, I was just starting to understand that I was the leader of the band, <laughs> but the band had fallen apart. So we spent a winter sitting around playing music, just three of us, a pianist, a guitarist, and myself. And um, we started playing Steely Dan. We started listening to Joni Mitchell's Shadows and Light video and playing some of the material from that. We started playing Stevie Wonder and realized <laughs> You know, we do have the capability to play more complicated music than just some pop tunes. And um, we went in search of a new band. We cobbled together a new band. And that band evolved over many years. But what we ended up doing was sort of a mid-century jazz rock fusion cover band. And we didn't cover things exactly. So we weren't nearly Dan or um, some of, like some of the cover bands you see that, that play at the casinos where yeah. they are, you know, they're dressing, they're acting, they are portraying these bands. We weren't doing that. We were just celebrating their music and interpreting it 
our way. Mm -hmm. we ended up working mostly for summer library concerts, community concerts, concerts in the park, concerts on the beach, uh, and did that for about six years or so. And then someone said, you know, it was the piano players, they started it. They, some of the piano players said, you know, we should be doing some cocktail material too. If we, if we do cocktail material, we could get a restaurant job. And, and someone said, well, what do you mean by cocktail material? And they said, you know, jazz, classic jazz. And me, not knowing what, di I didn't grow up on jazz music, um, said, what's jazz? And they said, you know, those old songs like Fly Me to the Moon and, you know, um, Beyond the Sea. And I'm like, oh, I know those songs. But what I didn't understand was that there was a tradition behind that. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Ah, lovely. <laughs> Spring. <laughs> so um, we started singing, doing that material, but I didn't understand the rules. I didn't understand. Um, excuse me, just a second. Live interview. <coughs> so I had to sort of go back and pedal back and learn that. So this was probably six, seven years ago, if we count the COVID years, where we all did nothing. And I had to, I went to Stanford Jazz Camp to a vocal workshop and learned simple things like, you know, you're supposed to count in, you're supposed to know the form. You're, if you get lost, you listen to the bass player, uh, all these sort of beginning tools. And it was really wonderful. And some of the other cool things that happened at Stanford Jazz Camp was every night there was music on stage. And Peter Erskine was giving presentations. And Chick Corea was on stage with young piano players sitting on stage with them, inviting him them to sit with him at the piano and play together. It was suddenly this whole world that opened up. And I knew, I, you know, I knew who Sarah Vaughn was. I knew... Um, Anita O'Day, I knew who these people were, but I didn't realize that they were part of this very, very deep tradition that is jazz. And so I feel like I'm the kindergartner on the block. I have an affinity for it. I have some talent for jazz and that jazz is primarily what I do now. I do mix in the catalog of music from the old band and I mix in the catalog of music that I love from the folk music mm. tradition but I do it all in a jazz format or a jazz blues format. Right. And I perform anywhere between um, just a duo, a vocal and a guitar to a seven piece band. And it's nice. So how much time, and we get two comments too. Um, oh, good. Yes. I don't know who they are, but they have to identify themselves. It doesn't come through unless you tell me who you are. Uh, anyway, someone says, love this. And the other person says, hello, uh, Joy and Jean. So I'm not sure who they are, but hi back. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> so what I, from the time that you got involved with this project, at, I think it was at school was or your church, which which was it as far as? I mean, this, this, me performing as an adult grew out of a church group. Okay. A group of so, uh, how long was it before that and this, this camp, this uh, jazz place that you went and learned okay. more about the basics? I would have to do math, wouldn't I? I would say I've been doing music for about, it was almost 10 years before I started doing jazz. Okay. So I spent about 10 years um, singing everything from Jackson Brown to Steely Dan, um, Carol King, Stevie Wonder, Aretha Franklin, this sort of crazy mix of music that was upbeat, but wasn't necessarily bar music. So occasionally we'd be invited to a local bar to play and invite all our friends. And we're like, oh God, what are we gonna fill four hours with? Because we had two, two hours of fantastic music, but we didn't, you know, I had, we didn't necessarily um, perform things like Take Me to the River or um, Grapevine, which I know now, you know, that's the, the thing that we would fill the sets with. Because when you play a bar, you really want to get people out there dancing yes. and grinding and drinking and picking up on each other, et cetera, and buying more alcohol for the for the yeah. host. Absolutely. Well, I have a comment here from Raiden Haven. Uh, 
And he is the husband of Jessica Lynn Reedy, who is an up-and-coming uh, singer-songwriter, uh, country music star, so to speak. She she records in Nashville, and she's really quite good. And this is her husband, and he says, oh, those are so crazy awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful. And he has he has uh, he has uh, some songs coming out, I believe. He, um, Raymond, correct me if I'm wrong, under the label or not label, but in his band uh, "Grieve the Astronaut." So if you get a chance to look up that Jane, uh, do it's rather Grieve the astronaut. I love that name. Grieve the astronaut. Yes, it's kind of a, a kind of a space theme, but uh, Raymond's a. Uh, a great piano player and and keyboardist, etc. So, and he's not a bad singer either, actually. Great. And where is he from? Um, they're from the south area, um, around uh, Tacoma area. Wonderful. Great. I'm <laughs> often in Tacoma. I was in Tacoma last week and stopped in a little co club called the Spar Tavern. Yes, I know. Um, music usually um, trios, organ trios. Yeah, early on Wednesday nights, and I sat there and had a nice dinner and listened to the band. They were wonderful. <laughs> that they've got, they've always south south uh, of Seattle. They've always had a lot of great country music and music. Period. Mm -hmm. A little little slower up north, but not as you know, not as uh, it's just something missing. But that's okay. That's <laughs> so just what it is. So going yeah, back, you know, I'm I'm definitely up north. I'm up on the Olympic Peninsula. Oh, yeah. In Jefferson and Clallam counties. That's where most of the work that I do is. I do perform in Kitsap. I have one um, event coming up in Tacoma. And then I, I go over to Seattle and perform once or so a month. So, That's a big trip, though. You get, you get around. <laughs> so, let's go back to uh, what you were saying about this jazz business. Um, I don't even want to attempt jazz. <laughs> I, I, I kind of, kind of play the guitar. I play the guitar, but I don't do mostly basic rhythm. I'm not, I'm not real fancy about it. And uh, I think that jazz would be very difficult music. It's in a different mode, musical mode. And I don't know the first thing about it. So I would think that what you're doing has to be pretty advanced to sing to that. You have to be able to, as a singer, you have, I mean, I, I have peers who went to college and studied music. Mm -hmm. and they study jazz music and they have much more knowledge of theory. And, uh, you know, you talk about modes. I don't really understand them at all. I can, <laughs> hear, I can hear things. I can compose something in my head and I can um, hunt and peck the, the melody out. Um, with an online tool that writes music, but I don't know what chords go with what I just wrote. I have to ask a, a guitarist or a pianist to match that up. I don't know if I've written something in Mixolydian or in some other um, mode. Sometimes I have, and I just it's just the way I, I, I hear it. Yeah. And I really should go to school and learn that, <laughs> but I'm almost 60. And um, there aren't many opportunities. There is a um, camp up here in Port Townsend at Centrum. There is a wonderful jazz camp. I'm unable to attend this summer, but mm -hmm. maybe at some point I'll be able to go and take some theory classes. Theory would be really great, especially for composition. Um, and I do rely on the musicians that I play with to help yeah. me out. You know, I come prepared with my own charts. We use charts that are kind of like a roadmap or sheet music mm -hmm. or um, a shorthand of sheet music, and um, sometimes they're great, and sometimes my charts aren't so great. <laughs> and, 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 I, I got to share this with sometimes you. <laughs> sometimes offered assistance. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but this just came across, and I had to laugh at it. It says, uh, the only theory you need to know is, does it sound good, Ian? <laughs> does it sound good, Ian? Oh, that's so funny. That's great. Excuse me. Yeah, I loved it. All right, I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but no, no, no. Uh, it's funny. I like the comments. I like that extra engagement. It's fun. So when I started writing mine, I did write the music to it because that's what I was hearing. But um, 
I'm country, so, you know, uh, it's and not I hard. Have a guitar. I have a guitar. It's back here somewhere. Um, during COVID, I pulled it out again. I, I periodically try and learn to play the guitar. And I tried when I was young, a kid. And I was kind of one of those wimpy kids who said, oh, it hurts my fingers. I don't want to do it. I tried. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I played the guitar in a pl in a high school play. I think I was in Godspell. That was the only play I was ever in. And I played the guitar in Godspell for one song. And uh, most recently during COVID, I pulled the guitar out because we weren't going anywhere. And I tried playing it a lot. And, you know, three chords and a lot of heart. You can get through a lot of songs. Yes, you can. <laughs> I can't bar chords though. Something doesn't work with my fingers. Yeah, mine so, either. I cannot do a bar. Chord. Up, instead of playing Fs, I'd play F, um, F major sevens. <laughs> so I, did, I could lift off a finger. And so, you know, I created this sound of, sh it's, I call it the shortcut sound. <laughs> and, um, you know, it is what it is. We do our best. Yeah. And we are not all gifted at everything. I no. am gifted at singing. Um, I certainly could grow and learn more and get better as we all can throughout our lives. But your I'm number not, one, I'm your number sure. one instrument, Jean, is, is your voice. It is. Yes. It is. The, the rest of it is secondary. That other people could do that. And but, I know how to pull together an excellent group of musicians. Um, I have scheduled myself with at least 10 different combinations of musicians this summer so that I can get to know people. Yes. I've only been here on the peninsula uh, for about five months before COVID hit. So I'm still getting to know people in this area. There are musicians here that I've played with since the fall of 19, but there are musicians in Seattle and Tacoma and Kitsap that I'm just still starting to get to know. Yeah. And um, this summer should be a lot of fun. Yes. Saturday, Saturday night, I played with a group of musician, musicians that I'd never played with before. And That's, we cool. That's cool. I do that all the time at jams. So. <laughs> anyway, um, you were just mentioning COVID, and yeah, that's part of this show, too. And that's a good segue into it. So everything was locked out. And did you have gigs that were canceled or was? Yeah, I did. Um the last gig I played was March 14th of 2020. And that was, and we almost canceled. We were borderline whether we were going to do it or not. And probably we shouldn't have done it, you know, in hindsight, but fortunately nobody got sick. Um, it was down in Kingston at Divine Wines. I play there once a month. Mm -hmm. And then I had a whole spring and a start of a summer schedule set up, um, and which was, I felt pretty good because I was new to the community. Right. And that of course all got canceled. At the end of August, I did one online concert through um, KPTZ mm -hmm. and we shadow recording. That was like a gift to be able to do that. We went yes. into the studio up at Rain Shadow and we played on the radio. And so that was really, really a great thing. And then the rest of the winter, we didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. and then there was another summer wasn't there last summer yeah. uh, which was two, I know it's like those two years yeah. disappeared um, in the spring of 2021 we started playing some music on my back back porch so I have I, right now I'm in Port Ludlow but I have another house that we've been renovating for two years in swim and it has a huge 50 foot covered back porch wow and so in the Perfect stage, right, right. So we um, started playing some of the musicians I had played with in before COVID outside. It, it was freezing cold and we were prepared to kind of do that for the summer and had thought about doing back porch concerts and inviting people to come and bring chairs on the lawn. And then suddenly things opened up and we were able to play music outside and I started doing Friday night jazz at the castle in Port Townsend and set up a rotation of myself and some other musicians in the area to play there. And we ran that through the whole summer, which was great. It was like this gift we could pl play outside. 
And then the fall rolled in and people got skittish again and it got darker sooner and it sort of all fell apart. And I played a, a few things indoors last fall, but not many, you know, not uh, up here. The community is um, primarily retired people or yeah. so it seems and young people that work for the retired people culture and so people are skittish about going out. They're still skittish about going out. People are wearing masks all over in Port Townsend. Okay. And um, and I saw that in parts of Seattle last week as well. Um, you go back east and nobody's wearing masks anywhere. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. And on the airplane, um, you know, people aren't wearing masks. So that would be kind of scary. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's this thing, you know, I'm... COVID is this thing where we want to be careful, but we also want to participate in what we love and we want to support the businesses that are able to support us. Right. So it's a delicate balance. I mean, it, it is. if I thought I was sick, I definitely would cancel a show. And I've done that twice this year yeah. um, where I've just said, you know, I've been exposed. I'm not going to take the risk. And so I've canceled the shows and I'm sure there'll be more of that. You know, it's uh, one of my best, um, musician friends out here, Tess, she and her husband, they just had COVID and she had to cancel shows and they're fine and they're better now and she's back at it, but you know, it can hit any of us at any time. Yeah, absolutely. I just had a request for you. Yes. <laughs> Somebody request. asked if you would sing a little bit of Ain't No Sunshine once they want to hear your beautiful voice. Oh, okay. So acapella on, on the spot. Okay. Ain't All no right, I'm gonna when she's gone. I don't even know the words to this. Um, can I improv it? Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. But a bit body better. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. This house just ain't no home Anytime she goes away And I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know Hey, I'm gonna leave it, leave it yeah, That was too high Leave it your thing alone Cause there ain't no sunshine When she's gone How's that? Oh, all right. That's not fair. Put someone on the spot. <laughs> I'm a pillow on the list. That's no that's real life, right? That's real life. It said beautiful soul and gorgeous tone. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. You know, real life is you, you plan it, you rehearse it, and you do it, right? Absolutely. And hopefully it comes out. We always laugh on stage. Um, jazz is very much about a form and rules but then taking the liberty to go off and, and experiment and, and reinterpret things. So you take a song like Fly Me to the Moon. Everybody knows Fly Me to the Moon. <laughs> and um, there's a form, an A, a B, a C, d different parts. And you go round and round. And as a vocalist, you sing the form according to the melody. And then uh, you could go back and sing it again, or you can have instrumentalists come in and they improv over the melody. Uh, maybe we can do that live. We can do an experiment with that. That would be interesting. And um, then the vocalist comes back and traditionally the vocalist then improvs over the melody the second time through. And everybody starts at the top of the page and you hope that by the end of several rounds, you all end together at the bottom of the page. So it's kind of like following a map yes. for a treasure hunt. And But sometimes, you know, somebody says, oh, that looks like a shortcut. Or that looks like a, let's go look at these birds first. And you hope that everybody ends at the, where everybody's going at the end. And usually, usually you do. And sometimes you don't. And um, that's jazz. <laughs> Absolutely. We have further comment on your singing here. And uh, they said, and you moved through it. Uh, bravo. And that you're fine. <laughs> and, and then there's a, uh, they send a bunch of little characters here. So when you get, when you get up where you can see your, you okay. can see this. Little faces. 
<laughs> yeah, and you even got a heart there, girl. <laughs> Can you see it? No, I can't see any of these little comments or faces. Yeah, okay. Maybe I need to be looking at a different thing on here. I see I, a private chat. Oh, here, comments. Comments, yeah. Oh, look. Comments, yeah. Look at all the comments. That's so funny. <laughs> no. Isn't this fun? <laughs> so you you mentioned that um that you you needed to um collaborate when it comes to the music portion of, of the um creation of your music mm -hmm. so i know you're a singer songwriter uh i didn't get a chance to listen to all your songs i apologize for that okay. it, i i have a lot of people on here and it takes a lot of work but um where where do you get your inspiration or where does this all come from can you explain to us how you get if we talk about there is an album. Yes, yes. let oh, me hear. Let me let me get rid of me. Very rare. Let me just um, preface this with: it's very rare that we, as non, -prof I consider myself a professional, but I am not a national touring professional artist, and so everything that I produce in a form of a CD or an online release, I'm paying for myself out of my own pocket. And it costs a ton of money. I know about I know, that. I know you know about that. Um, you know, I saved for 10 years to start this project. And I did it right as I left Philadelphia. I moved from Philadelphia to here. I did it in the last week that I was there. It was an impulsive move, but it was a smart move because it's a beautiful calling card. And it has gotten me more work here than I could have possibly ever done without it. But I had to borrow the same amount that I saved for 10 years, I had to borrow against my inheritance from my mother. Um, and she, so she gave me the gift to finish it. I could not have imagined how much it costs to produce this and people don't buy them. You know, people are like, Oh, Oh, you'll, you'll, you know, you'll sell them. Don't worry about it. Um, even if I had sold all of them, that wouldn't have paid for what it costs to produce it. Um, so when you see someone at a show, and they've got their CD, buy their CD. If you don't have a CD player in your car anymore, give no. it to someone who does, right? They don't, we need to campaign to get the CD players back in the car. Yes. I have this beautiful stack of gorgeous CDs and know where to play them. Um, and that we can't put them in our computers anymore either. And when you stream one of these songs on Spotify, you know, I think I get, 0.3 cents or something eventually and part of that 0.3 cents I also owe royalties to other people out of that 0.3 cents so really unless you're Beyonce you're not making a lot of money right. on online streaming but this CD has music in it it has one tune that I wrote in completion by myself it has covers of Steely Dan tunes of Joni Mitchell tunes it has two songs that were written by James Solomon, one of them also with his writing part partner, Quincy Jacobs. And James wrote those two songs in, in the 70s, 80s. They were disco tunes, and they're a total reinterpretation of those songs. Cool. He wanted to bring some of his songs back to life. Um, one of them was written by a gentleman I met at jazz camp in Canada. Um, I've been going to camp there for many, many years. And I started going to the composition portion of the camp at the beginning of the camp so that I could learn to use the tools that I have on my computer to write music. So I went with something in my head, recorded on a phone, you know, like turn the memo on and go, ba 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 da ba 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 da so I basically composed a song like that and I went to that camp and learned how to articulate it with software on sheet music and asked people to help me with the chords and it was wonderful. But there were also people coming there like John with music that they had written that was beautiful, but didn't have any lyrics. And so my <laughs> true gift is as a lyricist. Yeah. And there are several tunes on this album that have my original lyrics. Um, Siora is a Lee Morgan horn tune. There are no other original lyrics. There are no lyrics to it other than mine. So um, 
I, I love lo writing to other people's music. Sometimes I'm inspired to write my own melodies, but I've really only written a handful of songs and most of them have been workshop based. Yeah. And um, I wrote a nice folk song. Maybe I'll share it with you sometime. All right. <laughs> that um, is kind of like an epic Dylan song. <laughs> It's about these, this woman and, and her garden of roses, which is all her children. And um, it really nice description. Cut mm -hmm. down. Maybe you can help me cut it down. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> right. um, I also love curating music. Um, I play various different types of venues, and I put a lot of thought into what I curate for those shows. Uh, last Saturday, we were playing at a dance hall, and although it was not well attended, it was the end of a festival weekend, um, the music that we planned was intentionally planned for da dancers. And so we pushed our envelope a little bit, played some familiar things. We played Stayin' Alive as a jazz standard. I love that song. As a jazz nova. It was great. We had a lot of fun on stage. I'm doing a wedding at the end of the summer, and they want jazz, um, but, you know, they want it a little dirty, a little dirty jazz, you know, get down and get funky. So I'm putting a lot of thought into curating the music that we'll be doing for that. Um, I have a friend, Sarah, Sarah Shea. You should probably interview Sarah at some point. Oh. She is send also- me, Send me her, how I can, con send me her contact information. Yeah, I will. Okay. Um, she has interesting stories to tell about her career but she and I have been working together doing some concerts for kids. And ah. so we're going to be doing a concert in Squim at the end of June um, out at the park. And it's going to be focused on family music in a jazz format. Cool. So, you know, whether it's the Bare Necessities or a Rafi tune or um, something more modern that her little five-year-old might inspire right. us to play, yes. have fun with it and put some intention into that. I love so it's it. Always, I don't always do the same music. I have a vast catalog of music and I tailor it to the event. Cool. We have another comment here that you might like to hear. He said, and it's a great CD and I cannot wait for the next one. Oh, who said that? I don't know. Um, they didn't oh, leave. It's a user. Thank yeah. you so much. I appreciate you. And there is a next one coming. Um, that's the one thing I did during COVID. Um, during COVID, I found out I had thyroid cancer. Oh, God. And so I know, isn't that sucky? And uh, I talk very cavalierly about it now, but it was very traumatizing and I was very upset and thought I was going to die. Yeah. And worse, thought I was going to live and lose my voice. So right. I have this little scar here where they cut out half my thyroid and took out the tumors. And I'm very lucky I'm clean. So now I take thyroid medication to help the other half of my thyroid work. If you don't know, your thyroid is like um, a switch, a, a hormonal switchboard in your body that controls every all of your, all of your systems. And if it's not working properly because you have cancer or there are various other diseases that can affect the thyroid, then lots of other things don't work in your body. That's right. Right. And so. Um, in that panic moment, I wanted to record one more project. And I had um, been thinking about recording a country album. Oh, cool. Actually, You're in my world. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, sort of inspired, um, um, Edie Gourmet did a beautiful album that was uh, country songs. And Ray Charles did a beautiful album that was full of country songs. And so I wanted to do that. And when I started listening to the catalog of music that I loved, I realized it's all the male music that I love. I love Willie Nelson. You know, I love the old school country guys and um, the songs that they sing, although they're beautiful, are very male centric. And I, I just couldn't hear them coming out of my mouth. So I switched it up a little bit and went back to the folk catalog that I know. And that's what I did. I, in January, I went into David Lang's studio in Fife down near Tacoma. And I took in a guitarist, Brian Monroney, who from Seattle, who worked with me ahead of time on 
interpreting the arrangements I had in my head onto paper. I have to ask my musicians for help. And we took in Keith Lowe on the bass and uh, it was COVID. So David had us all separated in different rooms. He had us connected by little video cameras. We couldn't really talk to one another, um, but we could see each other and communicate through the video cameras. And we laid down 15 tracks. Wow. I know. And we did them to um, little drum, mechanical drum. Electric um, <laughs> drum. Yeah. Brian, bless his heart, made things. So one of the um, tunes we did was uh, Maiden Voyage with a really funky sort of syncopated beat behind it. And so he made a click track that was like that. And it was great. And then I went back in and recorded um, some of the vocals over again. And the plan has always been to go back in and add drums and add a trumpet. And David Lang is actually playing on two of the songs now. He plays the accordion with a group called uh, um, Pearl Django that just played in Tacoma at the Spar Tavern <laughs> yeah. this weekend. And um, so it's very interesting what I'm doing. I'm using a jazz format, but I'm singing primarily folk, folk songs, some tunes by Richie Havens, Joni Mitchell, Sandy Denny. Those are the primary ones that I can think of off the top of my head. And then I'm taking some jazz tunes like Corcovado, which is a classic Shobim Bossa Nova. And we're doing it as a cowboy waltz. <laughs> wow. I didn't hear that. <laughs> Just messing with things. And uh, playing. I wrote a beautiful arrangement of um, O Shenandoah. And so one of the tunes, have you ever seen the movie with Clint Eastwood where he sings called Paint Your Wagon? No. Oh, yeah, I have. It's so yeah. long ago. I don't remember it. Yeah, there's this orchestral choral tune that opens the, the movie. And, you know, it's, um, it's called, oh, gosh, I am almost 60. So I'm starting to have these moments, right? Uh, <laughs> I'm improving more on stage because I forget the lyrics or forget where I am. Yeah. I'll just yeah. start improving. Um, <laughs> the movie's Paint Your Wagon. I was born. Anyway, it'll come to me. So we've mixed, I've recorded that tune, the one that's going to come out of my mouth in a second. And then, <laughs> and then uh, a wandering star. Oh, that's not yeah. Yeah. And then we took well, I took Wander and Star and laid it under O Shenandoah. And for the, the, the middle part, I put in an old church tune called How Can I Keep From Singing? Do you know that tune? Mm -hmm. yeah. My life goes on in endless song. Ba 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 ba. Yeah, that sounds familiar to me. And you mix it all together. So it's kind of like this, you know, they talk about mashups on YouTube. People are always making mashups of pop tunes. This is a mashup of old tunes. Oh. So I like doing that kind of arrangement stuff. Yeah, a lot of good music was written back there. But I do have a comment I need to get to. Electric Davis had two comments on here. He says, hi, hi Joanne Jean, great show. And then my mom was on thyroid meds her whole life and after working by, at, by Hannaford, oh Lord, in the 50s, and she was able to sing after all, but didn't affect her voice. So there's some good surgeons out there. Um, I had an excellent surgeon, um, Brittany Barber from um, the University Hospital, and she said, I've never cut a vocal cord yet. <laughs> so I was pretty confident that she wasn't going to cut my vocal cords. Yeah. But, um, you know, it is a possibility. It's a possibility, of course, that they could get in there and it could just be a hot mess. Yeah. And they have to remove something that affects your voice critically. Um, I feel like um, I have to work harder. I think that, you know, my voice has been traumatized by the surgery, but it's still there. Yeah. And well, I was seeing where the last I think it is, is, um, I can falsetta up high, but if you heard, you know, you heard it when I sang um, Ain't No Sunshine and tried to go way up high, mm -hmm. it cuts yep. off. Yep. 
so I have to be careful. And and I've dropped some keys on some tunes. Yeah. There's a young lady. Um, her name is Sir Cher Sirka Cherokee, and mm -hmm. she um gives you exercises uh, if you work with her on because she also had problems with her voice, and they okay. were going to operate her on her, and she found a way to do exercises that um brought her her singing back so she could control it and uh, i haven't been able to get to her yet but yeah uh there are people out there who can um give you a few things that'll that'll help that i i also have thyroid problems but um so far the only thing like last night um I was singing and I must, they were, they were playing a little louder. They were praying over, they were playing over me. And, and so I had to sing louder. And by doing that, uh, my voice started getting really hoarse and scratchy when I tried to do more songs. So. Yeah. You know, it's really important that as vocalists, we manage that, you know, yeah. when the band starts to play over us. Yep. We often can't quiet them. Yep especially if you have a drummer, but we can, um, we can change our mic. I use a um, Sennheiser mic that is perfect for acoustic music and female vocals. Mm -hmm. But if I'm playing with a full band behind me, I'll change to an SM58 because I need that to cut through. Yeah. And if you turn the SM or the Sennheiser mic up too loud, it starts to feedback. Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, if if it was my band, you know, I'm able to control them. And you know, my husband would come up and say, you know, that this is too loud or that's too loud, and they'd be grudgingly would turn down. But when you go to jam, you're at their mercy. So, yeah, you are. Yeah. So Electric Dave said, "I'm on my way." Dash dash dash. Opening to paint your wagon. Oh, <laughs> you you know what he means there? Or? Um, you're going. He's he uh, he's on his way. I'm on my way. Opening to paint your wagon. He's opening to paint your wagon. Dave, to explain that we're we're lost here. Yeah, we're lost. He, paints <laughs> our, he left us from the right. movie. And uh, if you haven't seen it, it's delight. It's a delightful. I'll have to movie. watch it again. I don't remember it. It's about a mining town, and a mail order bride, and a love triangle, <laughs> and um, oh, he said that's the opening song. It is. Um, Wandering Star is the opening song. And Lee, what's the guy's name? Lee something sings it. I'm going to look it up. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> hey, Electric Dave. He's this big guy. Oh, Lee Marvin. He sings it. Oh, yeah. I didn't know he sang. He doesn't. Neither does Clint Eastwood. None of them sang, but they did for the movie. Oh, be darn. And, um, but one yeah, of the things that's beautiful about the, the version from the movie is that there's this whole, you know, men's chorus sound to it behind him. And it's very orchestral. And it just sets the tone of drama for the movie. And then the movie turns out to be funny. Yeah. Well, that's... Uh... That's amazing. Wow. I'm not into that kind of music yet, but I want to hear your stuff and go to one of your your gigs. It has to be over here when you get here. <laughs> when you get on this I'm, over, I'm over on your side um, this Saturday. Oh. I'm at the Sorrento Hotel in the Fireside Room with um, an all-women's combo, myself, yeah. on vocals. Where, where is this? What what city? This, the In Seattle. Okay. So this Saturday, I am in Seattle at the Sorrento Hotel okay. in their Fireside Room Lounge. They have music there every weekend. So if you can't catch me, please go by and catch someone else. They're, they're um, featuring jazz music okay. on Fridays and Saturdays and possibly Thursdays, too. I'm not sure. And I am performing with Linda Dowdell on the piano. She is from Squim up here on the Olympic Peninsula. Also, um, Rachel Contour, who is from Seattle. She'll be on the upright bass. And Maria Wolf from Olympia will be on the drums. Wow. 
And we will be doing classic jazz. A lot of the music we're doing, but not all of it, was written by women. Oh, it's love it. <laughs> with Brian Bonner. And uh, the rest of the music is just fun, beautiful stuff. Great. Super. Thank you for telling us. What else you got coming down the pipes? This is part of the, um, the program here that we're okay. using to, to promote what you have coming up. Um, I'm playing this Thursday, Thursday afternoon from 3 to 6 at Hama Hama Oysters. I'll be playing there several times on Thursdays, once a month this summer. And we're taking down a six-piece band to play on top of the shell pile. And then the first Saturday of June, I'll be at my regular first Saturday show at a little place called Divine Wines in Kingston. It's just a couple stores off the ferry. So if you're coming from Edmonds, yes. come and spend an evening there. Or you can, if you're coming from on your way to the ferry back over, it's a nice little stop. She has lovely food and an excellent selection of wines. Mickey Monroe owns that establishment. And I've been working for her since right before COVID. No, it's wonderful. And so there I'll be a guitarist and a bassist. Okay. I, I've been posting as many of your gigs that you put on the you. wherever I can find them. I put them on, on matured musicians. So I like to ask you to put it on so that we can have it on our, our site. So okay. yeah. yeah, that way I'll, we'll all find you. That's great. I need to do that. I need to be conscious and do that. I do um, spam the universe when I do shows and um, I have not yet been posting on your group and I should. Um, we also have our own group up here called um, Jazz on the Olympics, yeah. on the Olympic and Kitsap Peninsulas. And it's really um, about jazz on the west side of the sound. Nice. So whether people are playing in Tacoma or down um, maybe in Ocean Shores or in Port Angeles or Kitsap County or up on the Olympic Peninsula, you're allowed to post about it if it's jazz. And um, I believe that if we share, you know, I don't want to just share my music. If we share announcements about everyone's music, we develop a culture that appreciates that music and it benefits us. Absolutely. Absolutely. So during, as you look back on your career from where you first started to today, um, have you ever had, uh, you know, those aha moments or those things in your life that, totally change your direction or your thinking or uh, just, it was just so spectacular. You said, wow. Um, I'll talk about something that happened recently. Um, one, one of the things there, there are multiple reasons why I chose to do a house concert recently. Um, one, because my husband and I are renovating a house that we hope to be able to entertain in at some point a few years down the road. And part of that entertainment plan is not about me performing in my house for other people. It's about bringing other artists like yourself and regional traveling artists into our home for a small group of people. And that tradition is the house, tra house concert tradition. And so I signed up to do a house concert up here at a place called Concerts in the Woods they host musicians all summer, all season long, twice a month that are traveling, most of them, and a few locals like myself. And I went in with a guitar player and a bass player and myself and played with the music that I'm recording on the new project and other folk music and blues music in an acoustic format. Music um, akin to what I started out playing when some of those songs that I started out playing with those people from the church years ago. And it was an experiment, one, to see, well, how does this work from the artist's perspective? Because I want to understand that if I'm going to invite people into my home and host them. But part of it was also, um, can I make this work and could I go on the house concert road? And so I'm thinking about possibly touring that new album next year through the house concert circuit. Mm -hmm. And um, I was very unsure about what I was doing and you know which part of my personality as a musician I was gonna share and would it work with a, a guitarist that I had just met basically 
because on the road, you have to pick up people on the road. You can't necessarily take your personal guitarist with you on the road. And it went really well. <clears throat> and for the first time in my life, you know, people applaud and then there's silence. And twice I got, wow. <laughs> I had never gotten a wow before. And I'm like, a wow? A wow? <laughs> wow. And it, it just sort of clicked that um, there's something there. You know, I spent many, many, many years doing really loud sound on stage. And, um, you know, singing Josie at the top of my lungs with a wonderful band behind me, but I can really dial it back. And, um, you know, that's why I'm, I'm probably why I'm still working at divine wines every second Saturday of the month is because that's a dialed back performance. It's very intimate and a house concert is very intimate. So there's part of me that, that needs to listen to that and yes. say, uh -huh. you know, okay, what was the music that I was playing at that concert? where I got the wow. <laughs> yes. And let's stay with that. I mean, I can do all these other things. I love doing them. I want to do, you know, she who dies having done the most music wins or maybe not. Um, another friend has said, you know, you don't have to do everything all the time, you know, dial it back. So, so that's kind of like an aha moment. I have to sit and think, you know, what am I going to do for the next few years? I'm almost 60. I don't see myself singing at 70, um, maybe even at 65. I mean, I can hear it in my speaking voice. <clears throat> it's not going to last that long. And so how do I make it last in a quality way? Right? Yeah. I mean, the big six-piece band that I'm playing with on Thursday night is going to be so much fun. Yeah. But am I going to have to belt to cut through it? Yeah. I don't want, I, I, I want to get away from the belting and concentrate on the quality of my voice and the emotion. Um, I think the house concert venue is an op opportunity to convey emotion that I don't, that I keep in check in a little winery gig. Right. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. And that's what I hope um, people will bring to my home when we start our house concert series is that rawness, that, that intimacy that they might not show on another stage. All right. Well, I, what do you see happening between now and five years from now or 10 years from now? Any vision on goals set for the future? Other than dialing back, I mean, you just gave right, us- Right, right, I would like to um, finish the album that I started and that's all connected to economics. You yeah. know, my plan was to Mm -hmm. Oh, COVID will be over by the summer and we'll all work really hard and we'll make a lot of money. And then I can put that into the album. And last summer that didn't happen. Um, we worked a little bit and we're grateful for it. So hopefully this summer I'm making that money and I can put that towards finishing the album next year. All right. Releasing that album. I would like to do a children's project, possibly with Sarah Shea, possibly on my own. And that would be more folky than jazz. And, or maybe it's, you know, maybe, maybe there's this bridge that I'm creating between jazz and folk. Yeah. I don't know yet. And um, at some point I would like to do um, something completely original and wonderful and fantastic, but you know, that has to be inspired. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. you, know, you don't know when those, that's going to hit you. Right. All right. Absolutely. I don't want to just sit down and write music for the act of writing music. I want it to come from somewhere. Right. Yeah. When I, when I write, I, I usually, uh, it comes to me by itself. I don't know. It's probably just an emotion talking that wants release. And I, you know, I'm not that, I'm not uh, an experienced writer. I just started and, and, you know, I, I'm just now getting my music out there. So it's a process. Everything is a process with music. Um, I would also like, um, you know, end game to set a goal. Uh, you know, I'm exploring and trying to get to know various different um, music and arts organizations mm -hmm. in the area. And I would at some point like to work as a volunteer, you know, or on a board for something like that. I was on a board for a charity music festival for a little 
climb in Philadelphia and I really enjoyed that. And I'd like to do something like that again. You know, I see that as something I can do as I age. Contribute, yeah. you know, keep contributing to the arts and music in particular in some sort of way. Absolutely. Hi, Donna. So, Donna, Donna is one of, one of the people who watch me a lot. Uh, they do interviewing, or they had, he had, they had a program overseas interviewing musicians similar to this. So he just, he or she, I can't remember which one's which. Oh, God, yeah. give me Donna. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you had to give advice for new artists coming up based on everything that you've learned and certainly in the fact that the music that you're doing is uh, slightly more difficult than <laughs> rock or country. I shouldn't say that because it's probably not, but it just seems like it. It's a different, it's a different kind of thing. And if you had to give, if you have to give advice to singer songwriters or singers coming up who are front singers that don't play an instrument, given your life experience, what would you have to say about that, Jean? I don't have a lot of advice for young people because that's not my experience. As a young person, I was not involved. Not anybody. Let's put it not young. Anybody coming up. But what I want to say and that I think is important is it's never too late to start something new. I didn't start doing this kind of music until I was almost in my mid-40s. Yes. And I had no idea that I could do it. And um, I ran with it and then I ran fast and hard with it and I'm still running fast and hard as long as I can. And Bravo. done. I'll start something new. I started painting during COVID. Maybe I'll start, pursue the painting thing, take some lessons. And so, you know, I hear people saying, Oh, you know, yeah, I always wanted to take up the saxophone, but it didn't work out. Go buy yourself a saxophone and try it out because you don't know unless you try. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to learn to fly an airplane. Don't be afraid to, you know, start doing pottery on the pottery wheel, pottery wheel or to write a novel or whatever it is. Just go for it. You're not too old. You're not too young. Um, you don't have to wait until you get your... Um, one of my children um, thought about going into music and the music industry, and he went into architecture instead. And he hasn't picked up a guitar in 15 years. And, and there's part of me that is I, I'm obviously very, so very proud of everything he does. But there's also a part of me that, that's sad that, you know, he's yeah. lost that part of his life for now. And it'll come back to him. And it'll I hope he picks it up will. again. And I hope. Um, I'm sure he'll run with it, but don't be afraid to just try it. You know, I know a young woman from New York um, who I met at an open mic. There was a little short period of time where some folky girlfriends and I were hosting an open mic and this young woman came in. She had come out to the suburbs on the bus from the city. She was actually from New York and she had, she would get on the Greyhound bus on a long weekend and she would take her guitar or just her voice and she would ride, she called it the Greyhound circuit. And she would stop at little towns and she would target open mics. And she walked into this crazy, loud, rude group of people who were just not paying any attention to anybody on stage. And she sat down on the stool and she opened her mouth and silenced the room. Ah because she just had the courage to go out and keep trying. And then she recorded a beautiful album shortly after, and I'm sure she's doing wonderful things right now in New York. I haven't talked to her in, in many years, but um, her name is Cozy, K-O-S-I. Look her up, Cozy, and she has a beautiful Abby Lincoln tribute album. Um, so, you know, you just have to keep trying. I don't know anything about touring. I don't know anything about getting a producer. Um, you know, I've figured out DIY, how to do PR via social media. I think it works, but maybe it doesn't work. I don't know. How do you, you know? How do you know? You put all this stuff out into the atmosphere and people show up. And did they show up because of something you posted on social media? Or did they were they just hungry that night and walked in? That's <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. so sometimes I, you know, I usually work the room during a break and say thank you to people for coming. And sometimes I ask them how they learned, heard about, you know, the music. And most of the time, oh, we just came in for dinner and we're so pleased that it was here. So it's this crazy thing yep. that we're all trying to figure out. Every one of us who's doing music is trying to figure out how to get people there so that the owners love, love us for bringing in business and will book us again. Absolutely. Right? Well, I'm just starting on that circuit again. I didn't have that trouble when I was younger, but now that um, I've come back, it, it's really hard for me. And my biggest problem is just finding the musicians to lead, you know, lead even a lead would do. But um, I understand that country music is coming back. So I'm hoping that is true. And, well, you need to come up to the Olympic Peninsula because people in Squim and in Port Angeles love country music. Oh. Yeah. So you need to come up here. And open um, mic up there. <laughs> there is there is an open mic. Um, send me a note, and I don't um, I know who it's run by, but I, I think it's called The Sit and Bowl. Okay. There's a, there's a private Facebook group about the open mic at The Sit and Bowl, and it's um, someplace in between Port Angeles and um, Squim. There is a little wine bistro in Squim called Wind Rose, and he books um, duos cool. and trios, and uh, he often has country and folk musicians there. And there are a couple different places. Uh, I think the Blue Moon Cafe in Port Angeles, they would probably love to have country music there. Wonderful. Well, I will talk to you more about this. And hopefully when that second album comes out, you'll come back and meet us. I mean, meet with us. And, and I will. I made, I, you told me to make a, a flyer. So we're going to see if this works. Okay, hold on a minute. I'm, I'm going to remove me. This is a QR code. I just started using QR codes this year. And this should show up. Let's see, right there. If we just hold it there. When you come back to listen, to look at the video again, you can just take your phone and you open it up and you push the, um, hmm, how do I do this backwards? <laughs> <laughs> you push your phone on like you're gonna take a picture of that QR code and it will read it. If you have a smartphone, it will read it and pop you right up to my website. Perfect. And on my website, you can find out where I'm playing this summer. I'm playing all over. Maybe Perfect. I'll see you out there. And if I do see you out there, come up and say hello and tell me that you Absolutely. saw me talking on the boys' show. I definitely will. <laughs> that, would be, that would really be cool. It would. Thanks so much, Jean, for coming on today. And thank you all for listening. And um, I hope you all have a good rest of your week and you as well, Jean. And we'll connect somewhere down the road at one of your venues. Not sure exactly when, but I got a lot of venues to go to. <laughs> Yeah, you do. Everyone interview is waiting right. for you to show up just for them. <laughs> All right, hon. And Thank see you, you later. Friend. Thank you again. Bye -bye. Thank you. Well, that's it for us today. Um, next week uh, is Memorial Day Monday, and I do not have a show for you. I need to take a rest, and believe me, I'm going to do it. So goodbye, everybody, and thank you for listening today. Signing off until after uh, Snowtown, um, Frank Sandoval from Snowtown. He, he is a, a brewery there, and Snohomish is going to be our guest. So please tune in. Thank you, everybody, again, and take care. Bye.